I'm Katherine Hamilton with Flagler College Television. We had the privilege of speaking with Helen Whitney, Oscar-nominated, Emmy and Peabody award-winning film producer, director, and writer. Throughout her career, stories have taken her around the world. A few notable works include The Monastery, a 90-minute ABC special on the oldest Trappist community in the Americas, Faith and Doubt at Ground Zero, and a four-hour PBS series, Forgiveness, A Time to Love and A Time to Hate, which involves shooting throughout America, South Africa, Germany, and Rwanda. Most recently, Whitney tackled the topic of death in her PBS documentary, Into the Night, Portraits of Life and Death, which aired in spring of 2018. We spoke with her about what she has learned about humanity through the many diverse perspectives she has heard as a writer, documentarian, and lover of the world. So thank you for joining us. I just want to know a little bit about your background and what drove you to become a storyteller. I thought I was going to be a professor of Victorian literature. I was getting a degree, a doctorate at the University of Chicago. And I happened to go to a weekend in New York and I met a really a, a, a legendary figure in the documentary business, a true intellectual in a field that didn't have that many. And I started talking to him at a cocktail party and we talked for four, five, six hours. And he detected in me something that I wasn't aware of, that a restlessness and chafing against uh, academia. And he said, look, you know, you're in the final stretch with your, you know, your doctorate and uh, you love ideas and you've been in this academic bubble and a WASP bubble in New York for a long while. And why don't you just take a year off and come with me on the road, put some flesh on these ideas, I'll take you to places. You will hear people who you've never met. You'll come out of this circumscribed world that we all live in our bubbles. And then you go back and you'll continue teaching and finishing your doctorate. And I said, okay, why not? That chance encounter really did change my life. Let's talk about your most recent documentary. So you center in on nine individuals and their unique take on death and mm -hmm. whether they're whether they're going gently into that good night or whether they're not. And you mm -hmm. center around the poem by Dylan Thomas too, right. that right. so many people know about even if they don't know the poem, you know? Right. And mm -hmm. What was that like? How did, you, how did you use that poem to go into the film? Just from the very beginning, I thought this is going to be an organizing principle for me. The poem says, are you going to go gently or are you going to rage against the night? Um, it's a beautiful poem. And then all those voices follow it, which are in effect saying there are many more shades of gray to that poem. It's not just simply, are you going to go angrily or gently, but are you going to go with curiosity? Are you going to go with equanimity? Are you going to go with clenched fists? Are, are you going to go with anger? Are you going to go with denial? And I wanted to open it up and saying, how are you going to go? And I added to that, when you know it's real. And so when I was doing a little research, I found that you had to interview over 300 people just for one of your films to find nine people right. that you could talk to. What is it like to have people be so vulnerable with you and to share their spiritual journeys with you over your whole career? How has that changed you or affected you? It's an enormous privilege to be listening in on these conversations and shaping them. and. Obviously, it's affected me. I think it's made me a more empathic person, and it's gotten me out of my bubble. It certainly has. You know, what's interesting, too, is a lot of the topics you're talking about, it, there are things that people are afraid of. A lot mm -hmm. of fear in the unknown, and fear means silence. Fear means people don't want to talk about it. How mm -hmm. do you get people to want to talk about things that they're afraid of? What's the importance of talking about the things that we're all afraid of collectively as people? I mean, frequently <laughs> I would see people coming over, you know, to ask me what I'm up to, and, and I described the f a few words, and I would find that deer in the, in the headlights look, and people saying, I think I'll go off to the bar and have a drink, or can I get you an hors d'oeuvre? <laughs> so, I mean, and no one was bored, but there was that fear, with people either saying, you know, I've been married to this man for 80 years, 
and we've never been able to talk about this, but now we can. Or, or people who are saying, I'm dying, and now I think I can die with greater equanimity. And lots of young people, lots of young people writing in because your generation is really, I think, sort of pushing, pushing on this topic. And that was one of the big surprises in this film that I assumed that my audience would be baby boomers like myself, you know, you know for whom this last chapter is of life is what they're in, and the bigger questions sort of press in on them. But boy, I was wrong. This, your generation, not all of it, but a lot of, but a lot of you really want this openness. And so you're a very close friend and editor. You guys worked so closely together for years. Was it 30 years? It was a long time. He passed away during the making of this film, and I was so sorry to see that at the end, at the end credits. It's terribly sad. But how? How do you work on a film about death when so closely in your personal life death is happening around you? How do you, how do you work when it's mirroring what's going on and keep it balanced? The subject of the film came uncomfortably close. And he was really my best friend, and he was my collaborator of 30 years. And we find it difficult to talk about. I mean, the power of denial is such that the director and the editor are in this delicate dance of denial. Well, I, was there. I, couldn't, I just couldn't bear the thought of losing him, so I said, well, shut down the film for six months or a year, and I'll continue to interview people, and then you'll get better, and we'll continue, which seemed possible in the beginning. Um, but then I think, and it was really he who called me and said, you've got to come down here, we've got to talk. I'm not, I am going to die. We've got to find another editor. And, and, I, and I think about if we could dance around the topic in the midst of what we were doing, in the midst of what we were hearing and knowing in our hearts, and yet we found it difficult to acknowledge, imagine, you know. So it was difficult, and, and it remains difficult, you know, missing him. <laughs>